Hey, this is Mike, and this is the Film Lab here on thesubstream.com, which is our website. If you're not on thesubstream.com and you're watching our video on some other website, please be aware that we have our own website called thesubstream.com where this video lives as well, as well as a whole bunch of other cool videos that are actually entertaining, unlike this video. In a bunch of those other videos, we went over the beginnings of pre-production paperwork, the basics, how to write a screenplay in proper screenplay format so that it looks and reads like a real script, and how to break down a script, and how from a broken down script to create breakdown sheets, which are pieces of paper that are special cool rainbow colors that you eventually use to schedule your actual production. We're going to be talking in future videos about the specific pieces of filmmaking production paperwork that are specific to the film industry that you're going to use to schedule your production and that's a thing called a production board which uses things called production strips. But for now we're going to be talking about the basics, the rudiments, the fundamentals of scheduling a production so that when we get to that point it makes more sense. Just trust me. Now I know that this probably goes without saying, most people know this, but I still have to cover it anyways, which is the idea that when people think about shooting a movie, it's really easy and kind of makes most sense, actually, especially if you're thinking about it from a storytelling or acting performance point of view, to shoot your film in the order that the scenes will be in the script and eventually in the finished film. Now, this sounds great because when you have your lovebirds meet early in the first act on page three of the script, that can be one of the first scenes that you shoot, so it can be the first time that the actual actors playing the lovebirds meet, which is kind of neat, because then reality informs your art. Unfortunately, it's almost always prohibitively expensive to shoot a movie this way, because when you do it, when stories in a movie, they, they, they go from one location to location B to location C, back to location A, back to location C, back to location A, B, C, B, A, and when you shoot in script order, you have to haul your crew to all those different locations, back and forth, and relighting them and getting reset up all the time. And as it turns out, the only people that have got enough clout and money to work this way are people like Stanley Kubrick at the height of his career with a movie like The Shining. For the rest of us, whether it's a one-day commercial shoot or a giant feature, we have to be much, much, much more efficient than that because Making movies, whether it's a small one-day thing or a big feature, is incredibly expensive. And even if you don't have any money to spend on your thing, even if you have no budget at all, you're not just spending cash, you're spending your volunteer crew and actors' goodwill. And that's in just as short supply as money is. When you're scheduling a film production, especially one where there's not much money, but this holds true when there's a bunch of money as well, the things that you're always going to want to favor in your decision-making process about scheduling a shoot is two things. First, the availability of your lead actors, and second, the availability and the, trying to avoid moving between different locations. The thing with actors and the thing with working with crews that's weird and kind of counterintuitive is that the people on small films that are there every day, that always have something to do, like the sound recordist or the cameraman, they expect to be there working all day every day and usually show up from the beginning of the production to the end. But when people get cranky is when they have to wait, when they have to sit around with nothing to do. And when you schedule actors so that they work a little bit on Monday morning, a little bit on Tuesday afternoon, 10 minutes on Thursday at noon, and then all day on Friday, that's when people get angry because they have a lot of downtime in between. When you don't schedule, when you don't pay attention to their schedule and try and condense all of their scenes together into a small amount of shooting days, they get angry. And you don't want actors to get angry because when actors get angry, they stop showing up for your production. And if you've already shot a bunch of scenes with Aunt Brenda and she's got blonde hair and then she quits and all of a sudden Aunt Brenda has got brown hair for the last half of your movie, your movie's going to be in trouble. The other big thing that kills always momentum in filmmaking is dragging your crew back and forth between locations. If you're shooting in a warehouse and at home and at a skate park, try and shoot all your warehouse scenes on one day, all your home scenes on another, and all your skate park scenes on another. Don't drag people back and forth between them because people will lose morale going back and forth to the same place, having to light the same thing over and over and over again. It feels like wasted time because it is wasted time. And when people feel like you're wasting their time, they stop showing up. And when they stop showing up, you don't have a movie anymore. So use those always if you're just scribbling on paper when you're gonna shoot them. The availability of actors and not having to move between locations. Stick to one location and get all of your actors' scenes done there as soon as you can so they can go and be actors working Joe jobs and acting in other gigs. 
and you will be in good stead, especially when you come back to watch our future videos about the very specific pieces of paperwork that you need to know to schedule production, which are called production boards and production strips, which will be in a future video. I love you, bye. Thanks, Ryan, for shooting this.